What's up everybody, this is Bakabytes, I'm Frankfurter, that is Magically Average, and today we are going to talk about the hills we will die on, aka hot takes. This has been one that we've had in the, the chamber for a while, but we haven't really put in the time or effort to actually do until today. And today we are going to be talking about a vast amount of topics, these are all expressly our opinions, they can differ from yours, however... It is what it is. These are the hills we want to die on. I've got about six hills typed out currently for that I would die on. Some are hotter than others. I would say there's there's a couple in here that are pretty tame. But we'll start out with one of the hotter ones that I have. Oh, starting out strong. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. And that is the live action Cowboy Bebop was fine. It honestly was fine. So many people there. Okay. We'll preface this with. Oh, Cowboy Bebop is my favorite anime of all time. It is one of my favorite TV shows of all time. The live action was fine. Those of you who watched it, like, I don't know what you were expecting. If you were expecting a frame-by-frame -frame shot of the anime as live action, you're going to be disappointed. They said from the get-go that this is just a different retelling of the events that happen in Cowboy Bebop. And we're never going to see what happens now because... Y'all fucking complained and bitched and moaned, and we're not getting a season two. Season one was fine. It was, I enjoyed it. The one thing I will agree on is that the very last episode, spoilers for you who haven't watched it, sorry buddy, the whole Ed coming out of nowhere was really jarring and not great. I will agree with that. That was really fucking weird. But everything else about the show, I actually enjoyed. It was just taking the main chunk events and like some of the side stories that they told along the way and giving it a different spin. Did Was I a huge fan of everything? No. But I did want to see where it goes. But like, it, it was fine. I thought it was good. Y'all just fucking massacred that show into the ground and didn't give it a chance to tell the entire story. And I'm kind of sad about that. Tell us how you really feel. It was fine. It was, a good, it was a good show. It wasn't like, if you go into it with a mindset that, hey, this is not a one-for-one -one shot of the original show. This is a different telling of it. And just separate the two. You're going to have a good time. The music is great. The style, like the style that they did it in was great. The camera pans and shots were phenomenal. And the acting was pretty darn good. Like, it's not going to be, you know, Steve Bloom or Steve. Is it Steve or Steven Bloom? It's Steve Bloom. Steve Bloom. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to get like those voices from those actors because they're not the actors themselves. Like, if you go into it completely separating the two. But knowing that it's going to be similar events, you're going to enjoy it. It's fine. It's a good show. And I, it's kind of a darn shame that we're not going to get to see what the hell happens in season two. But yeah, that one's more, one of the more spicier takes that I have that I know a lot of people would disagree with, especially people who are fans of Cowboy Bebop, because the people who are fans of Cowboy Bebop maybe watched an episode and just fucking turned it off and didn't say anything else like the because the first scene in it is like a com casino shootout which happens you're technically uh, well yeah no it doesn't necessarily happen in the order of events but they do have a shootout with like the uh not the PETA people but the people with that were trying to save oh, like the yeah, water yeah, rats yeah. or whatever they were yep like, they had, like, a bloody shootout, so it's, like, it's not out of the realm of possibilities for that world. I don't know. It just was kind of sad that people just watched that first scene was, like, this is in Cowboy Bebop and just wrote it off completely. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't think people hating on it is the reason why it's not getting a second season, but overall feedback and review of it. I mean, it did probably have an impact. It definitely did. I have, but, yeah. I have a Cowboy Bebop hill. Okay. It's not a spicy one, though. All right. Um, but my hill is that no matter what anime comes out and how good it is and how perfect you might think it is, Cowboy Bebop will forever and always be the anime to show new viewers. I I think we have said time and time again this same you know same thoughts on cowboy bebop 
there's been challengers like spy family is yep. a really strong one i know many people will say attack on titan just because of the first episode alone which i it's a very very good episode first episode it's probably one of the best but probably not the ideal anime to get someone into it and i'm sure many people have many other opinions about many other anime existence but i don't care in terms of the overall experience the simplicity of it granted the story is a little like you know muddled all over the place well yeah they they definitely don't go in a a straight line it's very much kind of all over all at once everywhere happening yeah. constant it will still be the best anime to introduce someone to who has never seen an anime. I agree. And it, it is, yeah, it, there, there's nothing that I can think of that I've seen comes even close in comparison. Again, the, the closest one I'd say is Spy Family. And even Spy Family, you have to be... It, I don't want to say you have to have seen some anime to kind of like get some of the tropes, but... It's a really good contender. It has action. It has comedy. It has your, I guess, pseudo slice, slice of life moments. But it still doesn't compare to Cowboy Bebop in terms of just the style and flow of it all. Like, it, it is arguably one of the most perfect anime, even though it's not ranked as high as it should be on my anime list. Um, but hands down, no competition in my mind. The premier peak you want to describe it anime to show someone who wants to get into it or someone who's just looking for a suggestion to try to dip their toes into the anime pool that is massive and kind of gross in areas and imagine the average what about full metal alchemist brotherhood it's the best nope. show rated on mal nope don't care and i love full metal alchemist brotherhood I my other little mini hill I guess I'll segue into it is that I I think both Full Metal Alchemist and Brotherhood are really good anime. I think they're both fantastic. And I would argue in some cases the Full Metal Alchemist, the original one, uh is better than Brotherhood in some situations. I I do hear because I've never seen the original. I do hear that in the original they do take their time getting through the plot and they go through more details, which is why a lot of people like that. Yes. But in Brotherhood kind of rushes through that beginning portion to get yes. to that portion that wasn't hit in the original. There's a lot of, from what I remember, I, I haven't seen both in a while, so I, I could very well be misremembering exactly what took place. But my recollection of Brotherhood is that it definitely goes into the, I guess what would be considered the main plot line much quicker than the original Full Metal Alchemist, which took its time and kind of slow rolled it, and it was a very gradual build up to what was a fantastic ending sequence of events that took place. Brotherhood was very much more, we're gonna get to that point immediately. Let's just no time to build. We're gonna shoot right there, and then it's action intensity for the duration of the the anime, which is great. I have no no problems with that with that either. It was a fantastic watch. But I did enjoy the more, I, I don't even want to say slow. It was a careful pace. It was like very method, like there was a lot of methodology to how they wanted to go through each sequence. Granted, there was some back and forth bullshit that took place and that was a little bit annoying. But overall, I think both of them are great. And I'm sure people will freak out about that too and be like, by the way, it's the superior one. Well, yeah, because Brotherhood also followed the the manga to a T because it was finally finished by that point. So, yeah, there's that too. Fair enough. I've got uh, two that are kind of loosely tied with each other. Uh, first one, We're and this building is building molehills upon molehills. I guess this one, other. this one's fairly tame. I think I think a lot of people can agree with it. And there's like onesie twosies ex like exemptions onesie from twosies. this. Yeah, there's a there's like one to you know a couple exemptions to this, but. Really, there's not a show where the main character is the best character. Like, can you, off the top of your head, think of a show that you enjoyed the main character over every other character that is introduced in that show? Overlord. Oh, Jesus, fuck. I, I mean, that, I think, well, 
I, I guess it sort of goes into isekais to some degree too, but I tend to find myself liking the main characters of isekais more than some of the side characters because of the fact that the side characters are built in to play very specific roles or fill very specific tropes. And they can kind of be like, they, they can be very tiresome, but the main characters always to some degree, whether it's good or bad, mind you, very different in personality, in characteristics that make it feel like you okay you should probably be focusing more on the main character like perfect example is um mushoko tensei like i don't think rudy is the best character you're gonna say i the broody is not the best character not even by no. a mile not by a mile but the hardest thing is out of that one i can't even tell you who the best character is there's really Rougier. no clue for me i love Rugier's character I think he's a great character. I think, again, he serves a clear purpose, but I would argue you could also say the same for Glane because she serves a very similar purpose but gets less airtime. I also forget I would also, Roxy. I always forget Roxy. Yeah, there's Roxy. Roxy. Serves a very is, similar you know, pers purpose, yeah. doesn't get enough airtime. The, the problem is that in a lot of isekais, Mashoko Tensei being one of them, you get drawn to a specific side character that will inevitably disappear, and then another one kind of takes its place. Or you get the other instance of isekais, which is you get inundated with side characters and they all just sort of like are they're, they're, yeah they're good but they just serve a very basic purpose another one another example it's not an isekai but it it it's an adventure style um anime would be don machi where you're, there's just a fucking truckload of characters yep. but none of them really stand out apart from arguably two which are Bell Cornell, who's the main character, and Ice Wallenstein. Wallen shits. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, that's it. You got, I mean, with season four, especially though, you had Ryu in a lot of it. Yeah. But again, it's, it, it fluctuates because season two was a whole different cast of characters they focused on. Season three was a, whole, you know, another little small group of characters they focused heavily on. Like it goes in between. Yeah. That's fair. But, so it's hard in those situations to really find a character that you can attach yourself to and be like, oh, yeah, this is the best one. This is my favorite one. See, but you but say for me, that, but then there are people overload. who are like, love Hunter Hunter, and then they're like, oh, who's your favorite character? And it's the goddamn fucking pervy clown. It's just like, dude's in the fucking show for maybe, what, 20 episodes? Maybe? Well, the, a, lot of, a lot of people say the same thing. I mean, God, a, a clear example would be like One Piece, right? I, which like, I am currently watching over over a thousand episodes of One Piece. Like you have your main Straw Hat crew, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm sure many people would say their favorite character was one character that was around for a uh, one arc and then left. Yeah, I haven't gotten too like that far into where it, yeah, like di like an, a character disappears yeah. and I like them the most. But I will say Luffy is definitely not my favorite by any no. sort of the means. And I guess I, I had this and I was like, you know what? This is a mellow take because there is an audience that loves this character. And there is an audience that hates this character. And I'm in the hate it character bucket for One Piece and Usopp. Usopp is annoying. Oh. <laughs> he is next to useless. Like, I, oh, I, I, I hear that he gets like redemption in the future, but it's just like. I'm on episode 160 something. I don't know. I'm into this Skypedia or the Sky Island saga. Dude is just a fucking hobo. Ah. He's just a hobo hey. along for the ride. Wait a minute. You're Usopp at what is, episode? I'm in like the 160s. When did you start watching? Three weeks ago? Buddy. Four weeks ago? Something like that? Buddy. No, it was not four weeks ago. Three or four weeks ago? But I've been... I've been okay, to be fair, I've, I've skipped filler. No. I've skipped filler, which there isn't that much of. I think in the first like saga or two, there were maybe five to six episodes of filler that I skipped. And then the one right before Sky Islands, there's like six or seven episodes as well that I skipped. There's oh only like God, there's like 90 mm. some odd episodes for the thousand, almost 1100 episodes. That are filler. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. still, though, that's a that's a yeah, I've watched, watched a lot. Well, that's because I 
I just have it on in the background, and it's like I when I'm working, it's just I. Well, no wonder through... you find Usopp annoying because his voice is annoying, especially in the English is, one. No, too. but like his, it's not even necessarily the voice actor. I think the voice actor does a good job for what that mm. character is. I just think personally, he's very fucking useless. Oh. He's what, just, he just doesn't do is. anything. He, they give him a task and what, he fucks it up. What that character is, he says. Oofta. Yeah. He just but, fucks okay. every task up. I'm trying to but, like make a comparison, but I forget what. There is another show out there that I know that the character is absolutely useless, just like Usopp, but they're the lovable character, so they get a pass. And it's just like, fuck off with that. And if I remember it, I'll say it. But the, right. uh, the, the side B-roll from the main character take is that I think My Hero Academia Vigilantes has a better story than My Hero Academia. Granted, well, I was, have... You went off on a weird extension tangent there. And that's because I think the main character is better in Vigilantes than in My Hero Academia. Deku is just a shit fucking MC. He okay. Is a terrible MC, and I love Koichi in Vigilantes. Koichi's not my favorite in Vigilant, like favorite character, but I think that he's a better MC than Deku is in the original show. I just came up with a hill I will die on. Okay. Um, that I, that I'm sure actually will cr create much more chaos than than your little, just a little tiny, tiny little molehill that you've you've created for my hero, and, and mine is that there uh, there is no main character in my hero, because that's the point. I mean, they literally in the first season said this is the story about how I became the be the number one hero in Who the cares? world. Who cares? Deku is. Are it, you? It, it is. He is so the main character who, of that who show. Is, who is or series? Who is the main character in Attack on Titan? Technically, Aaron. Right. Technically, who would you say is actually the main character? Aaron. No, no one. There are so many sequences in which Aaron is not even involved in the anime. Then there are go, so many. Then you go down that bunny hole of like, oh, there are arcs of like, there's fuck, there is an arc of Overlord where what's his bony butt wasn't even a part of. What in part? Like, of, in like you mean season, when he's the adventurer? No, in like season two, I feel like there was a whole arc where he had no involvement whatsoever. No, it was season three. They focus solely on the intruders trying to get to the middle of their fucking cave, and he was not like a part of any of that. There are arcs of just any show where the quote unquote main yeah, character you're just talking about, aren't in. You're talking about arcs. You're talking about full arcs in that in in all of, okay in all of my hero academia the beginning season focuses almost exclusively on midoriya because it's his it's it's his arc to becoming a hero well at least getting into hero school right it's the battling over not having any sort of abilities to gaining one to trying to actually like get a handle on it figure it out to getting into school and then that whole arc begins ever since that point i would argue that there is no true main character because every single character in that show gets some sort of mini arc of either like here's my growth or here's how i've been able to overcome these obstacles or here's how i simply learned how to use my hero power better yeah, they're just filling out the world. They're filling out the cast of characters. Right. But that's the but if still you're doing side that consistently, characters. But if you're doing that consistently, I'm, I'm saying no one's a side. I'm saying the focus on this, on My Hero Academia, is the school or the class itself. I'm not even going to say school because they always fuck over class B. But the school, like the Except actual for that class one itself. one stupid arc in season five. Yeah, whatever. But <laughs> it, like, it, I people always complain about Midoriya being a bad bad main character. And I would agree, but I would argue though that he's not the true main character. There really isn't a main character in my hero. It's it's not it's not the focal point is never on one individual for the entirety of the show. The focal point shifts constantly. There's never one specific person, there's never one specific storyline, there's never one specific like 
even just growth that you're focusing on. It's everyone doing something simultaneously with one another as a whole. I see. I disagree because usually that like, I don't care if you disagree. That's my hill. Uh, fair. That's fair, the point fair, fair. of my hill. <laughs> Anyways, you can disagree all you want, but I just, it, I get sick and tired of people complaining about, I mean, granted my hero is not a top tier show. Like everyone says it is. It's not to the level that people shout upon the mountains to. And if you want to die in that hill, go for it. Cool. I respect that. But to complain exclusively that Midoriya is just a bad MC, fine. Yeah, he might be a poorly written character. He might be too whiny. He might be too bitchy. I'd say the same exact thing about Aaron, but I would also argue that my, Midoriya is not the main character. He is one of the consistently consistent characters. He's definitely one that draws the attention the majority of the time. And yeah, first season focuses exclusively on him. That's because you haven't created the class yet. You haven't established what the true purpose is of my hero which is watching an entire class overcome this immense hardship and obstacle which is losing the world's greatest hero and now facing the world's strongest threat i would say about 80 percent of that show is about midoriya which say... would would be the main character of a show if you are arguing that 80% of the show is Midoriya because he is included in No, not because he's included, large because portions. it revolves around him. Okay, so, all right, so let's go through. If if there was a show, if if it was my hero, the, I don't know, the, 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 the history of heroes, right? And it was the, the main character, quote unquote, was All Might, right? But it showed every single hero across the nation. Okay, and All Might was included a majority of the time, but it was never about him. It was about the heroes and how they, you know, ran their agencies, this and that, whatever. Doesn't matter. Okay, would you say that All Might is the main character? If the show's focal point was just exploring what it is to be a hero, what being an, a part of a hero agency was what the villains were like back then, how they had to confront international troubles as well, because this is all taking place in Japan for the most part, except for some of the, the movies. Would you say that All Might is the main character still? No, I would say that it's an anthology and that whatever okay. episode, like that's completely different so, from a series. An anthology would be, hey, we're just looking at this one instance and then moving on to the next instance and moving on right. to the next so, instance. So why wouldn't my hero be... Because to some degree it viewed in a similar fashion. You're going from them being in school and doing stupid tournament because it arts still bullshit. revolves around Deku in his progress to becoming the number one hero. You can okay, you can have that be yes, they say, here's my story on how I became the number one hero. Cool, right? But that doesn't have that doesn't mean that he's the main character at the end of the day. Because that's established through the storyline and how the actual anime progresses. If the focal point of the anime is one character and one character alone and you have the very well fleshed out concrete side characters, then yes, you're going to have a story that's going to be exclusively built around that person or around that MC co progressing through some sort of, you know, hero arc to some degree i'm talking the 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 literature the literary one not exclusively my hero to some end conclusion that's very plain and simple but you uh, there are instances and i would argue my hero is one of them in which there is no true main character because the story itself plays into the fact that there really is no clear person you should be focusing on at the end of the day yes Midoriya is going to become the number one hero. Cool. I think you and I are Throughout infinitely entire... going to just disagree about this. Fair I, enough. I think we should just move on because we're just we'll just Fair go enough. in circles. Um, I've got three left. How many do you have? I don't remember anymore. <laughs> All right. Um, let's go into the next one that I have then. Sword Art Online. Season three is a legitimately great piece of television. 
nobody really like not not nobody not a lot of people watch season three because they were so turned off by the end of season two halfway through season two where you have the mini arcs the mini stories about them being an elf in light or whatever the fucking elf fairy bullshit game that they're in that makes everything really fucking weird everybody's just like you know what i don't want any more of that i'm done with this show goodbye and even then, people probably stopped after season one because season one got weird as shit too when they introduced the fairy game as well. But season three pretty much just like hit the fucking reset button on that entire world and cast of characters and just said, let's try this again. Give you the same stakes and the same like intrigue that season one had the very beginning of season one had and just continued down that road and not stop until that story is pretty much exhausted and done that's what they did i think season three is legitimately good and is so much better than season one and two you can probably watch a majority like you'll get a little confused if you just hop into straight to season three but you can majority skip season one and two and understand all of season three and what is going on. It is legitimately a good season of television. And I... So would, I hmm? would you say that Sword Art Online is a good show, though? Yeah. I think there are p bad parts of it. We've discussed that before. There are definitely bad parts of it, but I think overall, as a whole, you take the entirety of it, I think it is still a good show. We've talked about this before. Yes. And it has driven me mad at times <laughs> and I don't, I don't want this to become a hill. I mean, it is a hill I've already said. I will gladly sacrifice my life on top, a top of, but if I will reiterate of a show is bad, the show I will is reiterate. Bad. Correct. If you come over to me and say, listen, season one's good. Season two is ass. Season three is the best thing I'll say I'll, you'll ever watch in your life. I'll be like, okay, cool. I'm not going to watch it. I'm not. I'm just not. That's fair. The reason why I stopped watching Attack on Titan was because season two bored the ever-loving fuck out of me, and I thought it was awful, god-awful, compared to season one. Season one I was in my books and, and still will be in my books as one of the best seasons of anime I've watched. Like, single-handedly, like, if I go, if I'm looking at just individual seasons of an anime season one of attack on titan is in my top five hand like no doubt but season two is garbage and it's the reason why i stopped and i know people will still argue no season two was great I, you forced me to get back into it and i will forever hold this against you i'll forever um, hold that you made me watch overlord which i absolutely uh, fucking despised uh, that's just because you're dumb sure there's no way around it um Season three was great of Attack on Titan. Season four is, again, absolute garbage. But that is going deep into one anime. This applies to any anime in which if you tell me that season, a season of an anime is absolute trash, and I'm talking like not like, oh, it was, it was just okay, right? I'm saying I'm, if you come up to me and say season one of this anime will blow your mind, season two is a literal hot steaming pile of garbage, but then season three will blow your mind again. I'll be like, all right, cool. I'm not going to watch it because it's not a good anime. But what it's if, not. But what if half of season one and half of season two are really good, but the other halves of those seasons are bad? I don't want to have to do math for you. But if half of something is good and the other half of something is bad, do you want to know what that percentage comes out to in terms of good to bad? I'll just do it really quickly for you. It's 50-50. And in my ranks, 50-50 means F. You failed. It's garbage. See, but on my anime no. list, a 5 no. out of 10 is average. It's, yeah. <laughs> because people what go a, in there and... What a piece and, of shit ranking system that and is. And just, yeah. Like, well, yeah, it, no, I, I, it, I will die on the hill, though, that season 3 of Sword Art Online is legitimately really fucking good. It really is. From start to finish, there are two major arcs to it. There's there's two full-on fucking... See I think it's like 50 episodes, if I'm not mistaken. It's legitimately good. So there. That's... Yeah. 
and I will not watch it because season two was hot ass. What do you got? What do you got for me? Just, just. I've got, I, I don't know. I at this point, I don't know what's hot and what's not in terms of like takes and whatnot. It is forty-seven episodes, by the way, season three. I don't. What part of me cared about the specific number? I just wanted to throw it out there. What part just of what, put it into, what, just put it into the episode? Not necessarily. Did you see for something you. on my face that was like, I probably should be accurate about the number of episodes just in case he wants to go watch season three? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna have to have a talk <laughs> afterwards because obviously you don't know my facial cues, and I thought you knew me as a person, and uh, obviously not because you um just stare you just at Jojo don't, you don't and get be me. happy just stare at Jojo you and just, be happy you just don't get me it's a shame just, just I thought we at, had a real connection just look at just look at and be happy I just I thought we had a connection just, just look I, behind I, me and be happy anyways what do you got for me I do you have, have any other I, hills yeah again I don't know if this is like super spicy or not whatever but um. I'm sick and tired of people complaining about isekai MCs being overpowered because, spoiler alert, they're supposed to be. I think the reason, like, I, I agree. I agree that they are supposed to be. I think the reason why people complain about it is because there are so many isekai out there that are very samey in the fact that they are just overpowered and it revolves oh, around yeah. the fact that they are overpowered and it just becomes really stale. I think one of the stalest isekais out there, which I think actually has a decent rap, is like uh, Grand... Oh, shit, I gotta look this up. It's like Grandson Reborn is a... Ah, shit, I don't know. Continue. Just it got reborn and into some family, does some bullshit, yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I, the that piece aside, because that's a whole other discussion about isekais having the same repetitive tropes about them, and they become stale over time, and people still eat them up, whatever. Uh, that's personal taste. But general blanket across all isekais, if your biggest issue about an isekai, or just the genre in general, is that all oh, the MCs are always too overpowered, then you clearly don't understand what an isekai is because they're meant to be overpowered wise man's grandchild uh, Larry, that's that uh, f again again there's no reason that was needed to be said right then and there yeah, there was a no pause. one there was no a pause one listening that's why i said it no one listening or watching was just on the edge of their seat gripping their fucking chair going god damn it if frank doesn't tell me that's fucking isekai he mentioned i'm going to have a con just i'm gonna have a fit i'm gonna throw a tantrum no one was out there like that there's a pause I so i was gonna throw you. it out there i've i've been trying better to not cut you off so whenever there's a pause i will throw my thought in there to just keep it going i did whenever there's whenever i'm pausing to like think through a thought i'm gonna breathe really loud so that you can't interrupt me i'm just gonna i'm gonna finish the sentence and just go and then like that way you know like oh he's still going <laughs> he's, he's just thinking the, the wheel the wheels are slowly turning in his head um yeah i would agree <laughs> Fuck, i lost my thought i would agree well, that, that, okay. that they're supposed to be overpowered yes and that's what makes the the like the comedic ones like konosuba really funny is that the main character is not overpowered the main character is kind of useless and in fact kind of attracts all these other characters that are equally as useless as him right i would argue because that a lot they of, are they are a bit more non-useless than he is yes, he's they are. very useless i mean everyone is useful and useless in their own unique ways he being the most correct but like for for anyone that is just like I don't, they're always so they're so they're too strong or they have too much knowledge. They're they're too this or that. I it, it needs to dial back. Like that's the that's an isekai. At that point, just w instead go watch a regular adventure, or anime. fantasy, or, or fantasy. Yeah, or whatever. just go watch. Just go watch Sword Art Online. I mean, that's a uh, yeah the fantasy it's i don't know would you would you call uh like getting trapped in a game an isekai no because you're still alive in your other like your original realm you know is then overlord not an isekai well that's the thing is it or is it not 
Because huh. people have people have argued that he technically he actually dies <laughs> in real life, and that's how he gets transported into the servers yeah. of the game. Sorry, spoiler. It's not really a spoiler. That's kind of like a it's fan just a theory, fan theory. Uh, yeah. yeah, but but um, yeah. It, that that piece just always irks me because a lot of I have a lot of friends, and and I've seen a lot of comments online too about how like oh isekais. Isekais are all the same. That has been said for millennia, but it's the isekais are all the same because the MCs are just too powerful. It's like, well, the yeah, that they're supposed to be. Either they're coming to this new world with the knowledge of their old old world and using it to their advantage in some way, shape, or form, or they've been reborn because some big tittied angel took pity on them in their previous life and was like, I you grew up poor i'm gonna uh, make you a part of this huge noble family also you can shoot fire out of your fingertips and congratulations your <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> basically every orifice and every extremity of yours shoots fire congratulations oh God, that like, that's that's like every fucking isekai so I, I it just doesn't make sense that people are still like it's too strong and that's why it, it, when you get an isekai like re-zero and um jobless yeah. reincarnation that's why we flock to it because it's so different from like the power hungry isekai of he's just overpowered and now he's right. like he could rule the world if he wanted to but he's the good guy he knows right from wrong it's just like I'm yeah over it. i mean mishoko tensei is one where like there is you saw power creep but it sort of got controlled pretty quickly yeah there um, there are still things that are beings that are more powerful than him potentially right. for now. I don't know. Right. Like, yeah. It's so Overlord is one where it's like very clear, no. Nothing nothing is going to ever match him. So Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was I was breathing loud, but mm -hmm. I, that was an actual pause. I apologize. I I know earlier I said I was gonna breathe really loud if I had more to say. Oh jeez, that was just I, confused. I would, I would say okay, I, that was actually a sigh. We'll, we'll right. call it a sigh more than anything. So we're just, what do we're, you got? We're just gonna move on. I have two left. Um, one of them is more of a discussion that I think is just a wider discussion that we can have and we've had before. But here's one for you. Uh -oh. If a show doesn't get a second season after, we'll say seven years we'll just call it seven years seven years is a good chunk of time just reboot it don't jump into the next season don't give us a second season with no fucking here's what happened in season one just fucking reboot the show do my the fucking full metal alchemist route if you've caught up to the manga and you just like you've created your show but you caught up to the manga and you end it you know with an original ending and then the manga ends and it's you know, a different ending. Just reboot it. Don't give it a second season. I'm looking specifically at uh, The Devil is a Part-Timer. And I'm also looking at um, a show coming out next season, which I'm excited for, but at the same time, why? Uh, Masamune Kun's Revenge. Why do we need a second season? Give us just, like, if you're going to reboot this show or you're going to, like, bring it back from the dead, just start over. Why do we need to go through, like, the confusion of, oh, I gotta rewatch season one. Give it an update, give it a new fucking fresh paint, like, co coat of paint, and give it to us, like, on a silver platter of, like, hey, after season one, you're gonna get a season two. Like, I don't want to watch a show, and then fucking ten years, a decade goes by, and it's like, we're giving you season two now. Now get on your knees and blow us because you love us for doing this. It's like, no, fucking at that point, I don't know what happened in the show. Just reboot it. Just give us season one again or just re-air season one. I don't want to just jump into the show dry. You know what? Well, you wouldn't be. You'd be blowing them. It'd be very moist. That's true. Well, yeah. um, I'm going to go one further than you. And okay. I'm going to use it. I'm going to use a, an anime as an example, but I, I do. I will still stick to my guns and say it, it should be applicable across the board. Um, just don't. Don't do anything. Leave it. Yeah. Don't just stop. 
Okay. We've had we've had discussions before too about how there are there are so many different stories out there just waiting to be shown on uh, you know the screen. There are there are plenty, plenty. Some good, some bad, okay? Not all of them are going to be top tier quality, but then again, not every anime that comes out is top tier quality either. And I'm not talking just animation, I'm talking, you know, just story and everything like that. But to look at an anime like The Devil is a Part-Timer in your example, and yeah, to go, we should probably just, we should just continue it, right? Like, everyone's forgotten that, you know, it's come out a bajillion years ago. Like, they're going to just, they're going to look at it and be like, oh, yeah, I watched that, like, yesterday, probably. They're not going to remember that we hadn't aired an episode in seven, eight years or whatever it was. Let, let's just throw it out there and then release an absolute trash pile. Uh, the better decision would have been just leave it alone. And I know people are going to get up in arms because there are plenty, plenty of anime out there with, with fully finished manga series that are dying to get a second season. Iran High School Host Club is probably the biggest one. I know people are always up in arms too about Yuri on Ice. Like, there's a ton, but I'm sorry to say you're better off just with what you have. Yeah. There's... Because the last thing, because the last thing in my mind that you would want is a cock tease of we're re releasing season one of your anime. It's in HD now versus what many people would want, which is a continuation. I think that's a that's a bigger slap in the face to those fans that have been just like begging, praying for more. And to your example though about just rebooting, I say that's equally bad for the very clear example of the anime that shall not be named. That is I believe a different Again, happenstance. It's it's yes, you it's you have like because you have like Trigun, which just came out, and the new Trigun is Trigun's phenomenal. New. Right? Yeah. Again, I let me preface every. Well, I, we should have said this at the beginning. Nothing is concrete. Everything has exceptions. There's there's nothing yeah. in this world or, or anything in particular too that has absolutes to it outside of a handful of things in our universe. Okay, Op opinions about are obviously something that is not absolute at all. So, yes, rebooting shows might be a good idea, and I, yes, I know I use Roroni Kenshin, for any of you who didn't know which one we were talking about, as an example of something that should not have been rebooted to begin with. But I still stand by my statement of, if your anime is seven plus years, we'll go with your um, you know, timeline or yep. parameters. Yeah, yeah. If it's seven plus years, just leave it alone. OK, don't touch it. Or in the case of like Trigun, take your time with it. OK, because, again, very simple example. Devil is a part timer was an absolute trash fire. And they looked at it and went, let's just do a third one, too, just for shits and gigs. Yeah, I just I, it, I it don't know how this, my that next season's going to go. Blows my mind. I will say there is one show out there that is like hovering on that seven year mark that has gotten a season two announcement, but it has been in development hell for so long that I'm like, oh, I don't know how this is going to turn out. And it's a great first season. And that's Saga of Tanya the Evil. That show came out in 2017, season one. It's I've been really good six things. years, essentially. We reviewed it uh, before your time on Bakken Co. And it was great. Yeah. In the before four. In the before <laughs> four. Yeah, like the first year of Baka and Co., we recorded uh, a review for Saga of Tanya the Evil, and it was great. I think season one is phenomenal. Season two, though, it's been six years. Like, going back, like, I would have to rewatch all of so like Tanya the Evil season one to understand what in the ever living fuck is going on. And I think there's a movie in between there, too, that might be canon. And I'm just, yeah. it's just one of those things that just like, I, as much as I want it, I have to go through so much fucking work to just get caught up. Shit. 
just to like, get I don't want to yeah. watch a review or just like somebody having to explain it to me like I'm two. I'd rather watch the entirety of the thing. And if I have right. to wait a year or two, that's fine. But yeah, I think that that leads itself or lends itself to what I was saying, which is like it something that old. Many people have forgotten about it, too. Again, you're going to have diehard fans and everything, and you're going to have people that will forever and always beg and plead for uh, more and more of whatever source material is out there. But at the end of the day, I just I still stick by if it's if it's that old. Probably just best to leave it alone again. Plenty of exceptions. Another good exception would ex exception to it would be bleach. But I would highly argue that the arc that they're on in Bleach was something that was highly, highly, highly anticipated by many fans of the Bleach series uh, because it's phenomenal in the manga series. And it would be really hard for them to fuck it up. And boy, howdy, did they just blow everyone's brains out with how amazing it was. Took, yeah. a, took a complete turn from how, at least myself, uh, viewed Bleach before, which was somewhat tame. This season last season for the thousand year blood war uh came out swing and swing and yeah. yeah quite literally with heads of flying as well so i think i think the next one to look out for though for this treatment of reboot or whatever after so many years is gonna be blue exorcist yep yep that's gonna that's be the gonna one announce. that it's just like yeah. Is this really such a good idea? Like we had a good time with Trigun and we had a good time with the what was the bleach. Should we really be bringing Blue Exorcist back? I really hope that fucking Roroni Kenshin dies in a pit on upon her arrival. Fuck yeah. that. I would very much enjoy it not getting any viewership, but correct. Don't watch that it, show. Protest yeah. it. Do yeah, everything you don't. can to. But um yeah, and that is pretty much the last hill I have. Um, there is another one that I have, but it's like a we could record a whole podcast about no, it. Give it to me. Give it to me. Come on, give it to me. Most Mention. dubs, Let's most go. dubs nowadays are actually really good. Yeah, I, I can, I can finish that by saying, no one should have to ever argue anymore about subs versus dubs. I will say Disney, figure your shit out because that dub oh, for yeah. the Disney's dubs though for their TV shows, aka summertime rendering atrocious disney figure your shit out you have all the money in the goddamn world okay figure your shit out hire some good actors voice actors don't do another summertime rendering summertime rendering phenomenal story zero out of like a one out of ten for voice acting it was really bad Fair enough. but Fair enough. most dubs with that one being aside i actually really enjoy the voice acting really do mm -hmm. it is quite solid yeah but and I, I would say, too, that it's great to see both, well, all the voice actors for every language that an anime comes out in put their own flavor to a character. Because yep. you can watch you can watch an anime in dubbed and then watch it in subbed, and the characters will feel slightly different. But that's because every single voice actor is putting their heart and soul into how they want fans to view their the persona they're bringing out in this yeah. character and i think that's wonderful you shouldn't have to mimic someone to a t it should be the person should be whomever you want them to be and however you can portray them to be and that's the beauty of having a show in multiple languages just give me ian sinclair and everything and i'll be a happy boy <laughs> maybe not everything but i <laughs> know everything he, give me no. him in tokyo mew mew new no, and because you say that, that you say that, but we already have, and again, I love him. Uh, we have Bryce Pappenbrook in quite literally everything, and uh, he can be very tiresome Fair at times. Enough. Anyways, that's gonna do. Oh, it gentlemen, if you ever listen to this anime or this anime, this podcast, we do love you in your anime. Um, we'll give Aaron you some Yeager's shit, but we're ass. never gonna we're never gonna really just say your opinion is invalid. The only opinion that is invalid is that Tomodachi game is a good anime. That is the only invalid opinion you can ever have. But that does it for us. We'll be back next week with a brand new topic. So until next time, spark triumph. We will see you then.